Who are you talking to right now? Who do you think you see? Do you know how much I make in a year? I mean, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Do you know what would happen if I suddenly decided to stop going into work? A business big enough that it could be listed on the Nasdaq goes belly up. Disappears. It ceases to exist without me. No, you clearly don't know who you're talking to. So let me clue you in. I'm not in danger, Skylar. I am the danger. The guy opens the door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. So you won't take warning, hey? All the worst for you. I'll take care of you now instead of later. When I gain those ruby slippers, my power will be the greatest in Oz. And now, my beauty. Something with poison in it, I think. Something with poison in it, but attractive to the eye and soothing the smell. Poppies, poppies, poppies will put them to sleep. See, now they sleep. Look, over there in that house is a kid that thinks you're the greatest. And it's not because you're a space ranger, pal. It's because you're a toy. You're his toy. You're Buzz Lightyear. Any other toy would give up any of his moving parts just to be you. You've got wings, you glow in the dark, you talk, your helmet does that, that whoosh thing. You're a cool toy. As a matter of fact, you're too cool. I mean, what chance does a toy like me have against a Buzz Lightyear action figure? Why would Andy ever want to play with me when he has you? I'm the one that should be strapped to that. This stuff. Ah, oh, okay, I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. You go to your closet and select, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you've got on your back. What you don't know is that sweater is not just blue, it's, it's not turquoise, it's not lapis, it's actually cerulean. It, you're so blurely unaware of the fact that in 2002, Oscar de la Renta did a collection of Cerulean gowns. Um, I think it was Yves Saint Laurent, wasn't it, who showed the uh, Cerulean military jackets. I think we need a jacket here. And the Cerulean quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers, and then it filtered down through department stores and trickled down to some tragic casual corner where you, no doubt, fish it out of some clearance bin. However, that blue represents millions of dollars and countless jobs, and it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when um, in fact you're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room for a pile of stuff. And one morning I just ran away. Early, still dark, I heard a strange noise was screaming, some kind of screaming, like a child's voice. So I went downstairs outside and crept up to the barn. I was so scared to look inside, but I had to. Lambs. The lambs were screaming. They were slaughtering the spring lambs and they were screaming. First I, I tried to free them. I, I opened the gate to their pen but they wouldn't run. They just stood there confused. They wouldn't run. I took one lamb and I ran away as fast as I could. I didn't have any food any water, and it was, it was very cold. Very cold. I thought if I could just...
just say one, but he was so heavy. So heavy. The Raja was so angry with me, he sent me to live in a Lutheran orphanage in Bozeman. I never saw the Raja again. Japanese submarine slammed two torpedoes into our side tube. It was coming back from the island of Tinian to Laity, just delivered a bomb. The Hiroshima bomb. 1,100 men went into the water. The vessel went down in 12 minutes. Didn't see the first shot for about half an hour. Tiger, 13 footer. You know how you know that when you're in the water, Chief? You tell by looking from the dorsal to the tail. What we didn't know was our bomb mission had been so secret, no distress signal had been sent. They didn't even list us overdue for a week. The very first light, Chief. Sharks and cruising. So we formed ourselves into tight groups. You know, it's kind of like old squares in battle, like a, you see on a calendar, like the Battle of Waterloo. And the idea was the sharks come to the nearest man, and that man, he starts pounding and hollering and screaming, and sometimes the shark will go away. Sometimes he wouldn't go away. Sometimes that shark would look right into you. Right into your eyes. And you know, the thing about shark is that he's just got Then you hear that terrible high-pitched screaming and, and the ocean turns red and in spite of all the pounding and the hollering they all come in and rip you to pieces. You know, by the end of the first dawn we lost a hundred men. I didn't know how many sharks, maybe a thousand. I didn't know how many men, they averaged six an hour. On Thursday morning, Chief, I bumped into a friend of mine, Herbie Robinson from Cleveland, baseball player, bosun's mate. So I wake him up and he bobbed up and down the water like a kind of top. Upended. Well, he'd been bitten in half below the waist. Noon the fifth day, Mr. Hooper, Lockheed Ventura saw us. He's a young pilot, a lot younger than Mr. Hooper. Anyway, he saw us in Cremula. And three hours later, a big fat PBY comes down and starts to pick us up. You know, that was the time I was the most frightened, waiting my turn. I'll never put on a life jacket again. So 1,100 men went into the water. 316 men came out. The sharks took the rest. June the 29th, 1945. Anyway, we delivered the bomb. 